So I'm here with Nick Feachery, who uh, wrote the white paper on the future trends of leadership development. And I'm just curious, personally, so how did you get on this topic? Uh, what kind of research background kind of grabbed you onto this topic? Yeah, I, it, um, I guess it emerged for me over a number of years. I was in Dubai, actually, at the time. I was living there for a couple of years, and I was doing all this leadership development work, um, and it was all the best practice methods, but what I started to notice was the best practice methods weren't work, working very well, so they couldn't be that best. Um, and so I just saw that the leaders were getting really, really complex business or organizational challenges they were facing. And so, and they seemed to be changing their challenges. But the methods we were using, you know, were still the same old method, methods which were getting used in the 80s and 90s. And I think the challenges were outstripping um, the methods which we were using. So I just want, I just wanted to stop and think, what what's emerging in the field right now, where is the future of leadership development going? So, and so that took you to Harvard. Yeah. So you went uh, New Zealand to Japan to Dubai yeah. to Harvard. All right, so tell me what you're doing in Harvard then. So, I mean, I was really focused around that one question, which is what is the future of leadership development? And uh, it was, um, so what I decided to do while I was there, I uh, wrote a list of all the best and biggest thinkers I knew of in the field over here, or the people who I wanted to interview and say, what's going on? Where are things going? And so I just started ringing them up and saying, I'm doing a research project. Are you interested in uh, taking part? And they all said yes. And so I just started interviewing them and I'd say, who else should I speak to in the field? They gave me more and more names. I ended up with about 30 people, um, academics, uh, business people, and um, sort of consulting leadership development professionals. And I was asking them, um, what are the biggest challenges people are facing? What are the best methods we're currently using? What needs to be phased out or stopped from leadership development? And uh, what do you think are going to be the big trends emerging? So as I started doing that, some clear themes started to come through. Well, can you give me an example of what some of these uh, leaders in the field were telling you about the challenges or the best practices we're using that's not really working nowadays? Yeah, sure. Well, I guess the, the biggest um, thing which came out of it initially was this idea that the environment is, has changed so much from how it used to be. So, and this term came up over and over again, which I hadn't heard, which was VUCA, which okay. is, uh, stands, it comes from the military, as uh, you've actually pointed out to me. Uh -huh. um, so, it stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And they were describing in the different in industries that there is so much ambiguity, complexity, and change going on that a lot of people are sort of feeling overwhelmed with what's going on in their industries and in their organizations. Um, so that was the first thing, is just how difficult environments are becoming at the moment. Hmm. Hmm. That's fascinating. Hmm. And so they talked to you about the difficult environments. Uh, what was the most, I'm just curious, what was the yeah. most interesting interview you did? I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the one I enjoyed the most was with Steve Kerr from, uh, he's the Chief Learning Officer um, with Jack Welch when they were sort of building Cronenville and things like this. And um, so he had really fascinating insights um, into a whole host of topics and a lot of them didn't get into the paper because they were a whole new topic, but um, particularly around evaluation he had some great stories. <laughs> great, well that's a great interview. And I know you're going to tell us about what you found, right? Sure, sure. So. Um, I think um, the, first, the first big theme which emerged was that when I asked people what are the abilities, capabilities that leaders are going to need in this new VUCA environment, what they told me, they started to describe things like um, dealing with ambiguity, interdependent thinking, um, collaboration across boundaries, um, dealing with complexity. And in fact, there was an IBM study which I discovered. They interviewed 1,500 CEOs, and it turned out the number one factor that they, that they were concerned about in their organizations was complexity. And they said the number one capability which leaders will need in the future is creativity. And they felt that the, their organizations didn't have the leaders who could cope with this new complexity. And, um, so, and the thing which emerged for me, they were all talking around thinking capabilities. They were talking less around the traditional competencies, which our organizations are full of, um, 
And, and the idea emerged that competencies are still important, but they're not sufficient. The, the behavioral competencies, we've done so much work around, and they'll get you so far, but it looks like the future is going towards thinking capabilities. In a complex world, can you think in uh, sophisticated ways to deal with that complexity? That's fascinating. And I know uh, we want to cover the rest of the trends you did, but thank you for introducing us to the topic and telling us the background how you got interested in it. Pleasure. All right. Bye. All right. Cheers.